Welcome to episode 44 of The Leap Home, Future Boy. This week's episode is sponsored by Mr Scrubble, the housewife's new best friend. Mr Scrubble cleans pots and pans so you don't have to ruin your beautiful hands. That's why you should get the power scrubbing force of Mr Scrubble. In this week's episode, Sam has to save a co-star from either of two terrible fates, but with the legal system determined to declare his friend non compos mentis, can time travel save the day, or is Captain Galaxy's future going to turn out bleak? It's a chicken. An upside down chicken. It's an old family recipe. Good afternoon, Ian. How are things? Not too bad. How are you, Jerry? Okay, we should get, uh, Mr. what is it, Mr. Scrubble? Yeah, it looks great. Pod- it's a it's podcast, like a pad. yeah, podcast sponsor. Yeah, yeah. why not? Indeed, quite well, wouldn't it? Yeah, just give away a freebie there to entice them in. That's it. We'll get in contact with their guys. I think we should. What have you been up to? Oh, I feel a bit like a, a Bond villain at the moment. Yeah, you're sitting there stroking your pussy. <laughs> hopefully, it. hopefully, it keeps quiet. Yeah, I'm not sure you're able to make it to par. No, um, drama at the Crucible last night. Oh yeah, by the time folk hear this, it'll have been a month ago, but yes. Yeah, but some of the Americans won't know about it anyway. They can look it up, other people or people who are not into snooker. I suppose, even in this country, if you're not in it, it's the, one of the main stories of the, the day in the news. Well, it's been a slow news day, actually, today. Overall, I looked on the, the top ten news stories, it was like, woman paints door, different colour, <laughs> uh, new computer game announced. <laughs> These are the top ten stories in the BBC today. No wonder the snooker terrorism is near the top. What happened? Uh, I think climate protesters mounted the table uh snooker table and released some dry paint was that what was it dry paint yeah yeah causing that particular table to be decommissioned despite the hoovering efforts of the <laughs> <Robert>. announcement team <laughs> yeah it's certainly a interesting episode looks yeah, like. it keeps things interesting doesn't it when was the last time you had a protest at the snooker i remember a streaker one year but nothing quite as political i don't think no yeah, anyway yeah i thought this was a, a fun episode a little bit sad it was sad and it was fun. I think it was a good episode. I thought it was interesting to see Sam overruling Ziggy without referring to anybody's eyes. What was that? Well, normally he says, oh, I could see it in her eyes. Yeah, right. And that's why you're wrong. But this time he was just like, no, no, I genuinely have a reason to think that you're wrong on this occasion. Sure. Before we discuss, do you have the socials? As always, we are at Leap Home Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. We're at The Leap Home on Facebook. And if you go to theleaphome.com, you'll find show notes for each and every episode. And if you want to be like Future Boy and see what's happening next week, you can jump onto YouTube, go to Colombo Podcast Productions, and you'll find the following episode there for you already. If you hit the subscribe and the like and the bell, you'll be notified each week when those come out and you can stay ahead of the game. Done. Almost. Also, review us on places like um, IMDb and Apple Podcasts, please. Thank you. Shall we talk about the future? Let's crack on. The intro uh, is normal. The tag was exactly the same. We saw at the end of last week. Sam arrives in a spaceship and is act- told to activate the time machine, and it starts rocking. He says, "Oh boy!" And we get the usual credits. He is wearing, yeah. What I've described as old-fashioned futuristic clothing. Yeah, it's silver foil wrapping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> after the credits, we're told it's October the 6th, 1957. He's in this spaceship and is told to, to deploy the anti-asteroid shields. Yeah, he is addressed as a future boy, which to me is an obvious Back to the Future reference there. Could well be. Uh, and there's some, yeah, as you mentioned, some science fiction mumbo-jumbo Yeah, he disengages the time activator and the captain tells him they're going to get a look at the future. Future Boy kind of implies he's from the future, doesn't it? He's he's from the past, if they're travelling to the future. Past Boy. Yeah, I suppose if you're going to the future. Mm, Okay. Stepping out of this ship, Sam trips to the dismay of what appears appears to be a film crew. Alongside his partner, who we find is called Mo Steen. He's an, an an older chap. Also known as Captain Galaxy. And he has to cover for him by claiming that time travel has if affected his equilibrium. So this is a live show, hence there's no uh, there's no wiggle room here. No, yeah, they have to keep going with it. They're being broadcast to the nation. There are people holding up dialogue cards as they activate their invisibility shields, and Sam has to be reminded he's got to read from these uh, these cards, which he does very badly. Yeah, and doesn't stop when it's somebody else's line. <laughs> no. It's not. I would imagine that's as easy as what it looks. A little bit like newsreaders. 
Some people... Yeah, it's probably a skill. If there's someone speaking to you as well in your earpiece and you're trying to read and... Yeah, I think it'd be quite a challenge. It just makes me think of the bit in Anchorman when they say you'll read anything that they put on the auto queue. Right. You don't see Anchorman? No. That's worth watching. Okay. Captain Galaxy is holding a device that looks a lot like Al's. Yes. Uh, apparently it tells him that they're on a futuristic cruise ship in 1987. The show is clearly aimed at kids. And one of the suits, I think his name is Ben. Yep. He's not happy when Mo appears to go rogue for a moment. Yeah, he sets the scripted lines aside and freestyles a little bit because he wants to teach kids that the future doesn't necessarily need to be violent. Now this appears to have happened before this, um, espousing if he's own sort of political and, and social views. And predictions. Yeah. He asks, uh, Captain Galaxy that is, asks Future Boy to agree and although Sam is pressured by the guys with the boards to bring him back on script, he's just happy enough to go along with Captain Galaxy's accurate or more accurate yeah. um, vision. Sure. I think we see Ben urging people to go to commercial but that, that doesn't happen. And then a nostalgic Sam is walked by Mo to another part of the set. So he's taking all this in. It's very... Uh, I think that obviously it reminds him of his, his childhood. A bit of nostalgia maybe. Yeah. They look at some uh, space mail at this point. A child called DV Chase of Wyoming has asked who would win a fight between Captain Galaxy and Superman. Yes. Now Superman. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Can you remember how they got the mail? How they retrieved it? It was a rolled up letter inside a rocket ship. Which was attached to a piece of string. Very quaint. Stylish. You wouldn't see the string on TV. No. Anyhow, Captain Galaxy says they would never fight with Superman because, number one, they're friends. <laughs> and number two, violence never solved anything. Which goes against the whole ethos of Superman, who solves everything with violence. <laughs> That may be inaccurate, I've not read all the comics. Ben's not happy with us, he, he really likes a bit of violence. Yeah, he's um, later on going to tell Mo that kids love violence as well. I think they do, I mean I certainly did as a kid and I was speaking to you earlier, I'm not sure if 10 is too young, but I am currently uh, going through some 80s action movies with my son. Uh, I've just forced him to watch Bloodsport and we're now on The Running Man, I've got Rambo up next. That sounds fine. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's a little bit of violence and a bit of bad language. Nothing, nothing else. Commando, you got Commando coming out. That will be, and that's also on the list, yeah. yeah Predator. <laughs> the Gary Glitter story. <laughs> Alien. I've not seen Alien myself. Right. As you know, I'm not a big sci-fi fan. Ah, oh, it's more sort of the thriller sort of tension style. Yeah. It's just the setting just happens to be Maybe space. a bit too scary, I think, for a kid. You don't know until you find out. We'll find out. Yeah. I'll let you know. See where the threshold is. <laughs> Anyhow, Captain Galaxy at this point reminds the kids to tune in tomorrow for another adventure in time and they cut. At which point this writer, I think he said Ben was his name, he complains that Sam's stunt when he tripped wasn't in the script and just because the Russians put a satellite into space doesn't mean these guys need to go into orbit as well. Uh, yeah, this is a point where he insists that kids love violence but we can see that Sam's uh, impressed by Moe's attitude. I think he likes it. I think he definitely does. It's quite clear that it aligns with his own vision of the future. And Moe goes on at this point to refute the point that's being made, saying that kids only like violence because they're taught to like violence by television, and that if they teach them instead about the opportunities and possibilities of the future, they may um, change their views. True. However, what this plays into is the, the, the wrong, the outdated attitude that violence, well, you know, enjoying violence and watching it will breed violence. I mean, no, that's not true. So there's no harm at all in kids enjoying violence. No. Why not? I mean, it's not like it's either one or the other. You can watch a, a violent show and a violent movie and then watch something that's more educational or more positive. Sure. I think Mo just wants his show to be one of the more sure. positive ones. He leaves anyway and um, Sam is told by the writer to have a word and let him know that if he does this again, he'll be out no matter whether the kids love him or not. Which is what they said to Gary Glitter as well. Right, I think that's enough of the Gary Glitter <laughs> references. Generally, it's one per episode. I apologise, did you use the quote up already? The writer leaves, and uh, another guy who I don't think we ever learn his name, but he appears a few times in the episode. I've just referred to him as Bowtie. Okay. He shows up looking a little bit camp. Not camp, what's the word? What's he look? He's he a little geeky. Like? Nerdy. Yeah, he reminds me of someone specific. I can't think who it is. It's not the young guy from uh, the... Play it again, Sam episode. That's it. I knew it would come to me. He calls Sam Kenny and he's brought an ice pack for his ankle. And at this point, 
Sam hobbles into his changing room. Inside, he sees himself in the mirror. Uh, he's a lad of around, what, 20, you think? Yeah, maybe in that ballpark. Dick Grayson. That's very much the, the line that he's working. And he reads a clipping on the wall that reveals that Mo was once a highly regarded Shakespearean actor. Yes, but he makes the critical error of reading out the name of the play. Oh, what play is that? The Scottish play. Macbeth? Oh, don't say that. Oh, you don't say that one. Oh. Um, Mo comes in and says he also likes the review but warns Sam along those same lines he shouldn't be saying that out loud. Saying what? The name of the play. Which is? The Scottish play. Macbeth? <sighs> Stop doing it. Okay. Remember they had a Star Trek episode based on Macbeth? And also the Blackadder episode. Yeah. Where Blackadder kept saying Macbeth as well. Uh, stop it. We're not actors. Well, Mo asks Sam how his ankle is and he says it's a little sore. But Mo says it won't be as sore as Ben Harris, the writer that they've been winding up. Yeah. Sam says that Ben just doesn't like Mo changing his dialogue, but this offends Mo further. Yeah, he claims that Shakespeare writes dialogue. Ben writes television. Now, this whole thing, and uh, just earlier as well, just previous to this, or just prior to this, I think there's a bow of Mo's head after Sam compliments him on these, these clippings, and I think that's maybe a little bit to do with being embarrassed about where his career has ended up. So going from a, a Shakespearean a actor with potential and integrity, and now you're doing this sort of kids thing. And I, thought, I don't know, I think was quite proud of being Captain Galaxy. I'm not, mm, I'm not so sure. Okay. Well, we'll if keep an eye on that one as we go I, through. I, I'm not saying he's not proud, but uh, the fact that he's got these clippings of himself doing Shakespeare. There's a reason he has that specific clipping and he yeah. mentions it later on. That's yeah, true. But also, is it, I think there's, you know, this is a bit of a, a, sort of a meta reference here. Well, I was going to say, yes, is this a de self-deprecating joke by the writer of the episode? Not just the writer, but the, the actors as well, because... I'm sure when they started off, they had, you know, they're going to be the next De Niro or Brando or whatever, and that hasn't happened. However, they have been very successful in a, a pulpy, sure. you know, throwaway you know, show that, that, that this is. It's not sort of serious acting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and in fact, you know, what we have here is we've got a show that is based on time travelling and there's one main character with a, a sidekick and yeah. that's exactly what Quantum Along Leap the same is. Lines, yes. yeah. Very meta. Hmm. Sam asks Mo if he's not worried that he'll lose his job if he keeps on freestyling in this way but Mo says he's not going to be here much longer anyway which is a reference to something that comes up Yeah, but before he can explain why there's a, a knock at the door which he opens and quickly closes when he finds that it, <laughs> that it is his, uh, his daughter, Irene See, this reaction to Irene doesn't fit with how the episode ends No, and I must admit I'm not entirely convinced that this relationship has been developed correctly or I yeah, no, fully buy into and and her responses to certain things don't always seem no. to fit either and it's hard, to, you know, you, usually you would find one of the characters to get behind and think they're right or they're wrong yeah but in this I'm not too sure, although I suppose you could say that in reality that's, it's, how, it goes, that's yeah. how it goes, no one's always, sometimes people aren't right or wrong, it's a yeah. it's a nuanced Mo tells Sam that Irene has a, a grating tone to her voice and then Storms past her as he leaves the dressing room. She follows him. Yeah, and Sam strolls out as well, where he is met by Al, who can't help but have a joke at Sam's new look and suggests that he's going to a costume party as a baked potato. Sam's concerned that Al's outfit as well, asking whether somebody might have died, because he's wearing a formal suit. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Al's got a cheek here, some of the, the get-up he. Usually wears, yeah. Wears, yeah. But he quite likes that stuff. He does, yeah. Anyway, why is... Uh, Al suited and booted He's got an alimony hearing coming up And his lawyer suggested that he dress boring Yeah, oh, certainly more conservatively Indeed And in return, he laughs at the FB monogram On Sam's suit when he's told what it stands for <laughs> Future boy <laughs> Yeah, well That's good Future You boy. think I'm bad? Ooh. When do you see my partner? Captain Galaxy Yeah, I bet he looks like another small potato <laughs> Where am I, Al? Where are you? Uh, oh, St. Louis. October 1957. How'd you know that? I'm Future Boy, remember? <laughs> Actually, you are a young act. Or actor. Young actor named Kenny Sharp. October 6th. We just missed the Sputnik launch. You should have left in two days ago. And what am I here to do? Race a speeding bullet, leap over a tall building in a single bound? What? 
Well, according to Ziggy, there's a 96.2% chance you're here to save the life of another actor named Mo Stein. Captain Galaxy? What happens to him? Well, sometime after 12 noon tomorrow, he apparently gets killed trying to hop a southbound freight train. Hop a train? Oh, come on, Al. That's ridiculous. I mean, where do you see this guy? I mean, there's no way he could hop it. All right, even if that's what happens, then this is great. This is an easy leap. All I gotta do is keep him away from the train yards. Well, you gotta do more than that. Ziggy says the only way you can save this Mo is by having him committed to a mental institution. Sam thinks this idea is ridiculous. And Al unconvincingly offers that he may actually be crazy, as who in their right mind starts riding the rails at 65? Sam's not buying it though. He says that some people just march to the tune of a different drummer and that they all know people like this and it's not a case to be institutionalised over. No. I think there's a lot of... It's almost like a... And it's kind of seems like it's a reference to neurodiversity here, like before it became really well known. There's people who are slightly different. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. But I think that what he's actually doing isn't typical of people who are neurodiverse. Well, he's, yeah, no. he's trying to build a time machine. Well, if that's what your thing was, it might be something you would do. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I think all of these—that's that, an issue I have. But maybe I'll be just you know that this is what happened back then in 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 the states. But you're thinking he's not doing anything at all here. That's that warrants being locked up. I mean, you, you certainly wouldn't be these days for this. No. Otherwise, why don't they lock up uh, Doc Brown? In fact, Back to the Future. Yeah. I've actually got a point about I've why. Got a couple of points. Yeah, but that, that, I know the answer to that, or okay. you know the logic behind it. Yeah, yeah. Sam suggests that Irene might be the problem. And outside, we hear Mo refuse to talk to a doctor. He's obviously chatting to his daughter at this point before he enters the the, the dressing room and asks Sam to take Irene for a soda so that he can make an escape in return for being allowed to read the space mail the next day. We should point out that Irene is at least in her 40s. What is she wearing as well? She's got a veil over her A yeah, pillbox her face. hat thing. Yeah. And I don't really understand Maybe why... It's the fashion of the day. Yeah, but why would he think... He also, he's obviously kind of infantilising her, thinking that she wants to go for a soda. Yeah. Like, an adult's not going to want to... No, yeah. ...do that. Although she does. Yeah. But, yeah. Hmm. Anyway. It doesn't allow Sam to argue. You know, he pushes and, him out the door and yeah. shuts it behind him. So back in the set, she seems a fairly stern individual, as I said, wearing this face veil and snarkily asks if he is Kid Comet before informing him that she is Mrs. Kiner. Yeah, you should refer to her as that as well. And telling him that whatever they're up to, it won't work and then turns on her heels. Yeah, Sam follows and suggests that she just leaves Mo alone, but she has an answer for that. What's that? She says he's a sick man. Two months ago he crashed his car because he was daydreaming, and a couple of months before that he almost burned down his house because he got distracted and left soup on the stove, and she had to drive ten hours to come and check on him. Yeah, I mean, these are just the things, again, um, for his age, these, these these are symptoms of dementia, other, other things, you know, just be becoming forgetful and not being able to look after yourself, but you wouldn't be you wouldn't be locked up these days. You'd have some sort of support network, you would hope, in, in place. Well, you would think so. And then Sam suggests that it would be better for Mo to be looked after by his family rather than an institution. But she's quite clear that she doesn't have any kind of relationship with him and it's impossible for her to take him in. Yeah. I mean, she says he's a, a sick man. Yeah. Which um, reminds me of the old joke. What's the old joke? About the guy who phones up his boss and says, Boss, I can't come in to work today. I'm sick. And his boss says... How sick are you? He says, I'm in bed with my sister. <laughs> anyway. That's shocking. Have you ever tried it? <laughs> I don't mean you can bring in bed with your sister. <laughs> don't knock it. <laughs> until... <laughs> Irene at this point starts to wonder why she's telling Sam all these things. I agree. I, I'm wondering the same thing. He's very... Bearing in mind that this is a wee nerdy sidekick on this yeah, TV show. Yeah, she's concerned, yeah. yeah. He should not be having... Although we never find out how long him and his her father have been working together. No. 
So if they have been together for say two or three years and they're a very tight double act, then you might say, okay, that's understandable. He he would have this interest. This, of this level of interest, yeah. This, mm-hmm. Sam suggests that the reason she's telling him is because he's listening, which I think baffles her for a moment and they head outside. Well, you say baffle, but I think it does resonate. I think she does accept this and I, I agrees with him. Maybe. And so they have a discussion as they exit the studio, so does in hand. And she reveals that growing up, it felt like she didn't have a father at all as Mo was always away acting in movies or on the stage. Yeah, he only communicated with the family by postcard or collect calls. Her mother died when Irene was 17, but before she did so, she um, she made her promise to take care of, of Mo. She... I mean, you wonder whether this promise then is the reason why she's interfering with Mo at this point. She feels like she's discharging her responsibilities. Yeah. Now, Sam gets quite aggressive at, at this point. He asks if what she's doing now, putting him in, or trying to put him into an institution, is, as you say, a way of her no longer having that that that, that responsibility to what, you know, what she promised. Yeah, but Irene has got more to say. She says that Mo didn't even show up for his wife's funeral and that's kind of driven a, almost driven a wedge or it's caused this sort of resentment. Well, yeah, I mean, I think this is where you can flip and flop because on one hand I'm thinking, well, she mentions here that he was always away in, in work and, and, and to me that's like, well, do you know what, there's lots of people that happens to. Yeah. You could be, your father could have been a travelling salesman. On the rigs. Been, on the rigs, he could have been a lorry driver. He could have been doing any number of jobs that he doesn't like doing, but he had to do it to provide. So not being sure. there, and especially back then when the mother had the more dominant role in the, within with the kids. Sure. It would well, have been a big been thing. Even armed forces or something like that. Anything, yes. Yeah. So or there are, at war. Even today, there are plenty of people, plenty of fathers who can't spend the time with their kids because their jobs mean they have to be elsewhere. So I, I thought, you know, that seems a bit overly, a bit sure. unreasonable on her part. But then, yes, yeah, she mentions that when the, the, the mother died, he didn't even turn up at a funeral. And then Sam just comes up with this completely fictional explanation for... He's obviously never discussed this with Mo. No, what was that? He says, oh, maybe he was just um, too upset. It was too painful for him. And she's quite rightly says he still should have come. That's Funerals are painful for everybody. Yeah. That's the whole point of a funeral. Very extreme cases where the the and the, yeah, the, the, the partner or the husband would not turn up for the yeah. funeral. Yeah. And they're very, rare, very rarely going to be when it was a happy marriage. Yeah, I mean, even if it wasn't happy, I mean, in fact, even if it was an unhappy marriage, unless you would show up, for, show up for their, their funeral, I mean, I think in most cases this would be down to some sort of mental breakdown other, rather yeah. than just couldn't be bothered. And Sam continues this aggressive approach at this point, telling her she needs to find a way to let go of the pain from the past or the issues that she's carrying from the past. Yeah, so they can find a way to start over. Hmm. Al, who's turned up, thinks that he is now getting to her. This never turns out to be true when Al says it. Think no. back to a little miracle, for example. Yeah. Every time Al says you're getting there, it's now you're not. <laughs> no. In any case, they are interrupted by Bowtie with a reminder that he has a live spot to do and Ben has told him that if he doesn't come back onto the set, not to bother returning at all. Al tells Sam though that he can't let Irene go and though he says to her, please wait, she says, um, no, here's the envelope to pass on to Mo. I'm not really sure why you've taken such an interest, but it's none of your business. Now she gets a bit annoyed and yeah, says, I don't understand this concern, but it's like you're trying to lock up two things here you're trying to lock up my friend yeah but even if you weren't friends has she not considered that his livelihood depends on Mo being available to work yeah 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 anyhow she tells Sam to leave her alone and hands him a letter yes as I said the yes the letter which I think Sam assumes is maybe court papers Mm. and then walks off so we're back on the set we find Sam is not only future boy but as you played out the top of the podcast Ian he's also Mr Scrubble yes and Al says to him if only the boys at MIT could see you now as he comes out dressed as as, as a sponge I <laughs> quite like that they go live and Sam is expected to perform a, a musical number alongside some dancers yeah, a wee jingle he gives it his best but doesn't impress Ben I don't think who he doesn't know any of the words no well I think there's two cars but again he doesn't manage to sing them yeah yeah I think um, Harris remarks that he should have stayed in radio yeah, himself should have said radio yeah. a lot easier than this newfangled television. <laughs> and as you kind of hinted at earlier on, Al comes over to tell Sam that he thinks that De Niro started this way. 
before telling him about what Ziggy knows of the content of the letter that he has to give to Mo. Yes, Ziggy apparently says that Mo has missed an appointment with a court-appointed doctor, so it's likely to be a new date for that. Yeah, I think it's a Dr Sandler. And as they have this discussion, Sam is being watched by a bemused Ben and Bowtie, who see him apparently talking to himself. Well, you mentioned this in the previous The, the Man from La Mancha episode, that when you're an actor, that's the one time you can get away with this. You yes. just say you're doing your lines. Yeah. Sam, I think, he believes this is a, an easy leap then, an easy solution. He says all he has to do is get more to meet with the doctor then. Simple. Yeah, I think there's still a bit of conflict between whether he should be um, institutionalised. I think Al's still on that side of the fence. Yeah. And Sam thinks he'll see the doctor, he'll see he's fine, it'll be okay. Sure. I mean, I think that's the thing to acknowledge that, yeah, sometimes you create the... The terminology institutionalised and locked up and banged up in a loony bin, etc. You know, it's obviously got negative connotations. But sometimes there are cases, often there are cases where people do need to be looked after for their own sure. their own benefit as well. And especially perhaps back then when they might not have had the same medication that we have today that could treat it. Or the, as I mentioned earlier, the infrastructure, the support network. Sure. That, you know what, yeah, sometimes it might well be the best thing for them. If they're going to end up killing themselves. For some people. Mm. Maybe not for more. Maybe not for more. Although if he is, <laughs> I don't know if he is messing about with a time machine. Well, we head over to Mo's house now with Sam, who thinks that it might be hard to spruce up uh, his friend's appearance, given the appearance of his house. Yeah. He calls out his name, as well as Curly and Larry, <laughs> <laughs> and enters through the unlocked door and starts playing with a, I think it's a mini generator, uh, before apologising and stopping when Mo himself appears. Giving off heavy Doc Brown vibes. <laughs> well, I've not heard yet. A poor man, a poor man's Doc Brown. But he seems too busy to concern himself with uh, what his daughter has in store. Yeah, well, he asks whether it was Irene that sent Sam, but he says, no, no, he just has to pass on this letter. Now, Sam tries to make him understand the consequences of what is happening. And when he points out that he has to deal with it, as time won't stand still, Mo invites him into his basement and tells him how, as a kid, he used to fantasise about a train that could take him anywhere to solve his problems. But now, I've got something better than a train. I've got a time onometer. What is it? It's a time machine. Uh, you sure it doesn't make cappuccino? When I first started playing Captain Galaxy, I became fascinated with the thought of actually being able to travel in time. And I began to read everything I could about it. Heisenberg's theory of indeterminacy. Planck's uh, hypothesis of discrete units. Einstein's theory of relativity. Yeah, but when you say time machine, you mean a time machine like... like on your show, right? The show? The show? No, 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 no. That's fantasy. This is real. Time is like a piece of string. One end of the string is birth, the other is death. You put them together, and your life is a loop. Sam, that's your theory. If I can travel fast enough along the loop, I will eventually end up back at the beginning of my life. He's almost got it. Uh, well, what, let me ask you, what would happen if um, you would ball the string Right? And then each day of your life would touch another day. And then you could travel from one place on the string to another, thus enabling you to move back and forth within your own lifetime, maybe. That's it. That's it. Then I could actually quantum leap. Quantum leap. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, it's interesting that Al's tune changes when Mo comes out with Sam's actual theory of... Yeah, but see, an issue with this, having that theory, it's very simplistic, that doesn't... That's not a theory. That's like, you know, when people talk about Star Trek, oh, they invented mobile phone. They didn't. They just said, oh, it'd be good if there could be a way of talking to each other through these little devices. But you've not invented how, how mobile technology works. Yeah, you need to get the actual how part yeah. 
nailed down. Same, yeah, faster than light travel, things like that. Yeah. It, so that's a little bit about the string. I mean, I can invent, and, and uh, Back to the Future did invent, you know, the, a concept of time travel. Yeah. You've not, you've not created that. No, you can't actually do it. Mm. Although, Mo thinks he has worked out a way to actually do it. Sure. Where do we go next? It's a strange... It's a sort of roller palace. Yeah, roller disco, disco yeah. yeah. Ben is performing the grand opening of this palace. And we see that Captain Galaxy and Future Boy are the special guests. Yes, Captain Galaxy comes out and calls the kids time cadets and asks yeah. for their questions. It does that. Before that, the owner is brushed aside by Ben like a person who shouldn't come into contact with kids. He steps forward and he's immediately saying, no, no, you stand back. Yeah, he's got a, a dodgy looking moustache going on and mm. we see him raise his eyebrows more than a few times. They, the kids that are, are as enthusiastically cheer Mo and Sam onto the stage, even though Sam clearly doesn't know the uh, choreographed greeting between the pair. No. Um, the first question they get is benign enough. They're asked, what will the future be like? And Sam's able to answer that having been in the future. Yeah, he talks about personal computers, microwaves and portable phones. Men in the moon. Yeah. The second question, however, doesn't go quite as easy as the previous. This is what happens when you ask kids to get involved with stuff. <laughs> okay, what's the question? He says, can you, go, can you go back anywhere in time? And they say, yes, of course we can. Well, he sets them up here, doesn't he? The does kid does a brilliant job. Done, yeah. Yeah. So, can you please go back two weeks and shut my gate so my dog doesn't die? <laughs> <laughs> this stuns Mo. And we see a disappointed Irene uh, look on from the sidelines as Sam does his best to find a, a suitable response by talking about seeing the dog in doggy heaven and... It doesn't want to be alive. <laughs> it I never liked you, it's glad it got away. Uh, he, he relays a message about uh, missing the boy and not being in pain. <laughs> so, he then covers us up by announcing that soda and popcorn are free for the next two hours. Yeah, he makes that unilateral decision here, yeah. much to the annoyance of the onlooking owner. Yes. Who hasn't budgeted for this. That'll be coming out of your fee, future boy. That's it. He then, um, can you imagine doing that in like... Um, to Gordon Brittas in the Brittas oh. <laughs> anyway uh, he, the two of them leave the stage and Mo's angry because he thinks they should have told the truth that he's able to go back in time he's going to do it to demo today yeah. and he'll shut the gate he'll be fine but Sam's probably a bit wary of that sort of suggestion yes he thinks that this isn't a good look when you're trying to put on a a show of sanity indeed but he does want to persuade Mo that he should visit with the court appointed doctor yeah he says he will go with him and at this point they're joined by Irene who wants to know if Mo actually is prepared to talk with the doc yeah he says he would rather have a tooth drilled without <laughs> <laughs> no any looking. anaesthetic yeah, yeah. Uh, but Sam persuades him that since he's time travelling tomorrow anyway he might as well go along so he accepts the offer this puts Irene on the back foot Yes, she suggests going to the doctor's office, but Mo's not up for that. No, he wants a, a more neutral venue. It's not really neutral. Well, he suggests his own house, and though Sam tries to stop that because he knows it's a state yeah. and the time machine's there, um, Irene agrees because mm. I think she likes the idea of dinner at her dad's. And that's where we find ourselves. After Mo says Grace, Dr. Sandler agrees with Sam that it's impressive how quickly Mo managed to whip up a meal. Yeah, they're all drinking milk. Yeah, it's odd for a, a dinner party when you have get guests. I'm assuming you didn't offer a choice. No, I used to as a, as growing up until I was I, 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 that was my drink of choice as a, a kid at dinner time. Until you were twenty five. Well, I would still do it now, actually. I had a glass of milk two nights ago. Mm -hmm. That's an exciting bit of insight into Thanks. my Thanks. my life there. <laughs> <laughs> Is it full fat, semi skimmed? It was full fat. I got a oh, tiny full, bottle oh. for the weekend, a one pinter. Right, okay. And I had to finish it off. Yep. Anyhow, as they uh, unveil the dinner we heard at the top of the show, it's an upside down chicken. I want to say a chicken upside down as well. Another insight into my life. Yeah, it didn't seem the biggest sign of an, of, of mental unwellness. No, he has cooked it okay. Yeah. He's just presented it upside down. Yeah, it doesn't... He probably wouldn't even have noticed. I wouldn't have noticed, I don't think. Yeah, it's because there's meat on the bottom. The brown meat in the bottom is some of the best meat. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Anyway. Nonetheless, the... Meal seems to have went down well and yeah, Sandler passes and we see yeah. the doctor raving about this chicken. Yeah, he thinks that Mo is joking about his culinary rationale. The bird uh, placement. Yes. Yes. Irene, however, holds back tears as she knows her father was not joking, and she and Sam are both concerned when the doctor goes with Mo 
to make coffee. They don't want him on his on his own with him. No, uh, but Mo stops Sam from coming along, and Sam says to him just to you know keep quiet about the whole time travel stuff. And when he turns around again, he finds that Irene has moved through to the living room, where she is looking at a photo of her parents. We had a few good moments. Whenever he'd come home from the road, he'd always bring her calla lilies. <laughs> He's doing great, don't you think? An upside down chicken is not my idea of doing great. Look, can't you at least give him credit for trying? Is that what you want? No. No, I want you to hold off on this hearing. Spend some time with him. It's not too late to get to know him. I already know him. And I know I can't keep spending my life worrying that every time the phone rings, it's somebody calling to tell me he's hurt himself. He loves you, you know. Did he tell you that? Well, no, but he wants to. What, with postcards? Irene, your dad loves you. And I think you love him, too. You're just too... Full of the past to realize it. You don't know anything about my past. I know that if you don't stop feeling sorry for yourself, <laughs> you're never going to get to know that man in there. Yeah. It's not too late. Take a look at your time machine. Well, it's not real pretty. You see, I was never much for design. But... Well, this could be very interesting. Sam is uh, dismayed at this development that we heard at the end there. Yes. So hearing Mo invite Sandler down to the basement to view his time machine this ends their conversation uh, and neither of them think that it bodes well for his future down in the basement Mo unveils this machine which looks as you said before we started recording a lot like H.G. Wells version of a time machine it does yeah I mean, it's an obvious nod to that I think Sandler tumours Mo or he's not well, sure I, he's joking I think pretty or... much everything Sandler says is a test isn't it he's trying to set Mo up to see what his responses are yeah so he says or he asks Mo where he's going to go in this time machine and he says he can go anywhere. Yeah, I, I think he's he, he's developed this so that he can watch uh, TV shows that he missed. And obviously, yeah. this, is a, this is a very elaborate uh, recorder. Yeah, uh, they haven't VHS. invented VHS yeah. yet, so <laughs> he's going to go back in time to watch the show he missed on Wednesday. And that's, I think, well, we'll come back to this later, actually. So he sets this machine going, but unfortunately it, it doesn't really go as planned no things start to spark and shudder and shake and they aren't able to turn it off and it nearly explodes <laughs> he says it's on eternal power <laughs> yeah another thing he seems to have invented fortunately it burns itself out and when they all eventually dare to stand back up from their hiding place Sandler ominously claims to have seen enough so if it had worked would you have seen enough then would that be what do you mean if it what, if actually managed to go back in time? Yeah, I think that would have been fine. I think he'd be hailed as a genius. Okay. Yeah. It's the next day now and Sam's back outside the house waiting. Yeah, I think it's the next morning where Al finds Sam hovering outside and tells him that his ex has dropped the demands uh, for alimony. Can you remember why? Um, I think he has persuaded her physically. Yeah, they examined each other's briefs. Al's back in his usual attire as well. And after Sam explains what occurred in the basement, Al remarks that maybe it is best that he was put in, in, into hospital. And I think again, yeah, you can see it. If he's down there himself, he thinks he's building a time machine. That's okay if you're messing around. But when you start dabbling with electronics and things that can explode and... Yeah. You have to say... Mm. But Sam sees himself in more. Yes. He remembers when he was beginning to expand on his theory of time travel that the government wouldn't give him any money no okay that th that is fine but here's the thing was an actor with no background in quantum physics sam was a, a child a genius with numerous degrees employed as a PhDs physicist and yeah phds and, and this was a research a, 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 a government backed research uh, project so th there's no comparison here really to some guy who thinks he can build a time machine and him well sam thinks that was on the right lines he's just ahead of his time yeah, I mean, moment of the, where is he getting all the, the, the technology from for this? We don't even really see an explanation of his technology. We mm -hmm. just see the theory. Yeah, although he's read all these other books as well. Mm. Sam has a plan. He's not going to give up at this stage. However, he is set back very slightly by Mo's appearance when he emerges from the house. Yes, he is wearing a silver pyramid on his head, which he says generates positive energy. Yeah. <laughs> However, he's also got news for Sam. 
I'm exasperated, Sam. Yeah, what's that? He's finished repairs on the machine and it's going to be ready to go on schedule. And he's going to leave immediately after the hearing. Sam sighs and wishes that he had hired him a lawyer. And is shocked when Mo tells him that he wants that he wants him to argue his case for him. Who did he think was going to argue the case? Himself. Oh, maybe. Sam points out he's just an actor, but... Uh, I like this response. Yeah, it's fine. Act like a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> he does allow Sam to remove the pyramid hat from his his head at this point yeah and we're next in the court chambers um where the the doctor is making his verdict known yeah he delivers his conclusion to the judge well, as a judge or, yeah, I guess yeah. A judge, yeah that mo should be enrolled in a mental institution and al is not happy with this term no the judge speaks to irene yeah. ask her her honest views does mo need institutional or psychiatric care she looks over at her father and then starts to describe the concerning incidents that he has been involved in recently. Sam stands and tries to defend Mo, but the judge tells him to shut up till it's his turn well, to speak. He's, he's very uh, precise in his terms here, isn't it? The judge is somewhat sarcastic, saying that as future boy, Sam will have already seen that he has a chance to speak in the, the time yeah, to come. It might be sarcastic. It's not Sam uh -huh. claiming to... He's obviously not happy with the idea of Sam representing Mo, I don't think. It shouldn't be some young kid. Yeah. Who plays Future Boy and Because that's the thing He's not defending him on a charge of speeding This is about him being locked up for the rest of his life yeah. He really And in fact I think that the the judge is in the wrong here as well I think he would have a responsibility to Appoint a solicitor or yes, a lawyer of some kind Or at least uh, adjourn until he can determine look what's going on here Yeah he Shouldn't be letting this little guy uh, The fate of, of Mo shouldn't be in his yeah. hands Irene says that she doesn't think Mo is in touch with reality and she's afraid he's going to get hurt, which is an actual concern, as opposed to what Sam comes up with, which is nonsense. Yeah, he stands again, but declines the use of the, the pyramid half from Mo. Yes. <laughs> um, and I think he starts almost cross-examining Yeah, based Irene. on the private conversation that they had. Well, I've noticed here, unethical, but I mean, I suppose if he was a, a, a lawyer, then that would be unethical. But he, He's trying to make the point that Irene is only... Um, raise these proceedings because of her childhood trauma or her childhood um, angst. Yeah. But a court appointed doctor has said that Mo should be going into care. It's not Irene that's saying this should happen. No, I'm not really sure why Irene is being asked. This should be a, yeah. based on a medical opinion. Well, I think only. she's being asked basically, is, will, are you willing to take him or does he need to go into care? Yeah, okay. And. Sam doesn't actually introduce any evidence here. He just comes up with a theory that Moe's a scientist doing scientific exper experiments and it's not a, a reason to be institutionalised. No, 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 okay, so that's true. Being, doing ex scientific experiments, of course, is not. But he rhetorically asks if other famous people, therefore, uh, were also crazy. And he, I think he, he mentions Neil Diamond, well, he confuses Neil Diamond with Neil Armstrong. And then there's some other people who are not noted uh, scientists. Yeah. It's like uh, Columbus. What's, what's that got to do with? Well, he's crazy. He thinks there's a a, a land mass over that way. <laughs> All right, okay. However, Irene focuses on the time machine and bluntly asks Sam if he believes he can actually time travel. But before um, Sam can answer, well, Sam actually stalls a wee bit here. Mm. Um, and the, the wee guy that we, we mentioned earlier, little peewee, he comes in um, with sacks. And he says he's got six more out in the car. Now, what's in these sacks? Fan mail. See, I didn't buy this at all yet. So it's letters that Mo gets every day from people that believe he can travel in time. It's the miracle on 34th Street defence. Yeah. If all these people believe he can time travel, is he insane to also believe he can time okay, travel? But, yeah, so apparently uh, this shows that society believes the same as Mo. No, it doesn't. It shows that children... Yeah. Well, Sam um, misdefines insanity as believing something that society doesn't believe. That's not yeah, insanity. no. no. That's having an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and we've already got a professional doctor who's given a professional verdict on his sanity. Yeah. But anyhow, yeah, so Sam's point is all these folk who make up society, they all believe he can time travel. So he is not insane to also believe he can time travel. But, but again, why doesn't he just, why doesn't the judge or I say, yeah, but these are all letters from kids who also write to Santa. Yeah, it's, it's nonsense. <laughs> of course. Sam says Mo's just a dreamer and a lot of things seem crazy before they actually occur. And he asks whether Mo should be punished for dreaming okay two things 
one, he's not being punished. He's been cared for. Yes, this, uh, this is the point. Unless you're saying it's a, and it might well be, uh, a, a, a draconian institution where he's maltreated, but we don't know that. So all we can base it on is, yeah, is he going to be a danger a, a, and a harm to himself and potentially others in society? Yeah. Or not? And well, that's it. Yeah, the whole sort of wearing hats and things now isn't... That's, that, that's the point. It's not just about, oh, he thinks he's can invent a time machine. He's also wearing these daft hats about positive energy. It's, yeah, that's, that's another thing, isn't it? And, it? and he's talking about eternal power yeah. sources and stuff So he's, like not, that. he's not acting like a scientist at all. No. Because that's the thing. If you say, what, what should be happening here is, okay, you might be a genius who has discovered or worked out the, the theory of time, uh, how time travel can exist. So what you should do is present this in a paper write it up and explain it as yep. a scientist an academic Not would do build a time machine and no with a little hat on your head no anyway at this point the, the judge who must have predetermined his verdict given how quickly he reaches it mm. makes his pronouncement Mr Stein Mrs Kiner it is a painful moment in any family when a division arises within it it's also a painful moment for the court when it is invited to decide such matters However, here we are. And although Mr. Stein appears to be rational and in control of his faculties, there is evidence that he may pose a threat to himself and others. Therefore, I'm going to recommend that he be confined for further evaluation at Timothy Psychiatric Hospital for six months, term to begin immediately. You can't do that. I'm leaving in a few hours. Don't you understand? I'm doing this for you. Dad, you need help. Dr. Sandler, would you be so kind as to escort Mr. Stein to Timothy? Certainly, Your Honor. Come along, then. Don't touch me! Well, we can figure this out, okay? I promise. No, I'm not going to let them lock me up. I've worked too hard. I've got too much to do. Stein, please don't worry. Everything is going to be all right. Ha! No, Mo. Mr. Stein, get down from there. Mo, come on. Don't do this. No, no, I have to. I'll see you in the future. No, no, Sam, he's not going to the train yard, he's going home. I'll have the police pick him up. No! Listen, he's your father. You say you want to help him, now's your chance to prove it. It's your call, Mrs. Kiner. My car's out front. Let's go. So Irene's agreed to try and help. This is just suddenly a complete change of heart, but we know that he's dived through a massive window at great risk to himself. Yeah, that's just another example of why he is a, a rescuer. That was insane. That was insane. <laughs> that was insane, yeah. At most house, anyhow, Sam and Irene, right, this is quite similar to the end of the Spontini one. Yes. Yeah, they arrive with Al shouting for them to hurry up as Mo is about to turn himself into a French fry as he sits in his HG Well style chair and shouts that he loves them as he prepares to set off into time. So he believes he's about to leave. Mm hmm. Uh, he engages this machine and we see he starts to leap the blue glow comes well, okay. over him yeah it, it smokes and it vibrates rapidly and yeah you, you're right the, the blue glow does I mean that might, might just be lighting that he's put around it I suspect it's meant to imply that yeah. he's starting to but it's not just by Sam or Al or Irene is it not? I don't, they don't refer to it at all now okay in any case it breaks down much to most disbelief and dismay so you can see that he really thought what happened I was sure I was going here yeah it's because you're insane Mo. yeah anyhow that Leads to a complete sea change in everybody's attitudes to everybody else. Yeah, he apologises to Irene and tells her he wanted to change things and make it up to her and and to give her, his wife Calla lilies. Well, this is it. So he says. Did we, did we mention that earlier on? We well, it was in the clip, so we didn't ah, say right, anything. Yeah, about okay. it. I've got it in my trivia. Tri tri yeah, it's been mentioned before. Yeah. So he brings out this Macbeth review. Oh, I've said it. Nope. That uh, <laughs> Sam mentioned before. And he says this was the start of all the problems. He um, got this good review just as she, Irene was about to be born and it led to him getting a lot of offers of work which he felt he had to take up and what he wants to do is go back in time and make a bad review instead of a good review and that would fix everything. Yes. He would then be at home, be the father he should have been and the husband that he should have been and this completely wins Irene over. She realises that he was uh, only being rude because he was going to go and change history and everything would have been fine <laughs> Um and she tells him that they are a family and they have plenty of time left now to make up for it, which she seems to be happy enough with. Gives yeah. her the lilies that he's holding mm. and they tell one another that they love each other. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, she says, you know, we had a family, but only a half an hour ago you were trying to get them locked up. I said that they had no relationship. Yeah. Mm. But he was trying to go back in time to change that, so therefore everything's but fine. I'm still I'm going to refer back to what I said earlier. It doesn't seem enough of a driver. I, there's not enough there for me to to support Irene. She seems very selfish. He was out earning, that was his job, he's an actor. Yeah, but then he's acting really weird towards her when she's showed up and... No, well, he's acting weird because she's trying to get him locked up. But the way to get around that is not to act weirder. No, no. Anyhow, we're back on set. He is performing as Captain Galaxy one last time and announces his retirement live on air. However, there is one final letter that has to be answered. Before that happens, though, Al explains to Sam what's going to happen to Mo in the future. Yeah, and I think that he has to accept that uh, Ziggy had a, a sloppy floppy. Mm, whatever that means. Mm. Mo goes to live with Irene and basically retires and entertains the local kids with tales of the future. But their jaws drop when they hear that the letter writer is a, a young Sam Beckett who wants to know Captain Galaxy's theory on time travel. Oh, it is Sam, we get this from Elk Ridge. Yeah. So it's the same one here. It'd be about four at this point. And as they listen, uh, Mo explains his quantum string theory that was given to him by Sam, uh, who promptly leaps. Now, this is the whole sort of internal space time continuum. Uh, how would this work then? Because if Sam gave it's himself. A paradox. Yeah. But then we don't know yet whether Sam's memory is affected by the changes he makes in history. So he could still be on the timeline where he did figure this out independently. Yeah. And, but but uh, then is inspired by. Sure, but also as well here, this suggests that Sam as a kid used to watch this show. Yeah, of course. But he's never mentioned it in this episode. Maybe he doesn't remember. He's got Swiss cheese brain. Really? Mm. Such a fan that he wrote. As yeah, a, you would think he would mention I used to watch this. That's one yeah. line they could drop that in. It's like brilliant. I'm now I'm partnering up with. Yeah. And he, he leaps um, before they hear any more of this. And but, so, sorry, in that, in that case, would this be his first leap into someone famous? Someone that he knew of? Yeah, possibly, yeah. I think in the future he leaps into people that are uh, that yeah. more of a reputation, but this is the first time, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, he leaps into a lecturer at his own university. Yeah, but he wasn't famous. Or was it his own university? I don't even remember. No, I don't he leapt into himself. That's not famous, but he knew who he was. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the answer to your question. It's He now, however, leaps into a male stripper at a club surrounded by women getting announced. I think it's Trippendales. Yeah, which we can talk about. I was a bit surprised they actually used the, sort of the brand name. Yeah. Anyway. He gives an old boy. That's the end of the episode. And yeah. So yeah, we've already talked about this. I'm saying Irene's about turns about as sudden as Billie Jean's father last week. <laughs> yeah. And okay, so did you get the feeling that the premise for the episode was how would society treat Doc Brown if his inventions didn't work? Well, but as far as society knows, inventions don't work. And he's well, regarded that's, that's, that's the other thing that I thought when I was writing this. Yeah, so he is kind of treated as a Yeah, he's as a, as a In fact, uh, Strickland asked Marty a few times, why are you hanging about that whack job? He just doesn't have a daughter to institutionalise him. Yeah. Oh, see, the, the, the difference is, Doc Brown is um, someone with, first of all, a science, I think, a scientific background. Yeah. And he is trying to invent a time machine, but he himself has accepted that he hasn't and he's disappointed. Whereas Mo thinks he has, or thinks he's got the answer to, to time travel. Yeah, that's true. What I didn't understand in this episode, how did Sam stop him from dying at the train? What did he do that changed it? Well, he was running away from the, the, the hearing. Which he did anyway. So he went he, home instead. Why did he change where he was running to? Yeah, why did he go home and not to the, the train track? Yeah, what changed history? I don't, I don't see anything that Sam did that caused that. No, I mean, in fact, yeah, if we think about it, if Sam wasn't there... The same thing would have happened. Yeah. What did Sam do to alter time here? Or, 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 or alter uh, the outcome? I don't understand. I mean, he talked to Irene, mm. but then she didn't change her attitude at the no. hearing. So maybe he changed the final part where she shows up and they live together. But I don't know what he did that caused Mo not to run to the train. Good question, and I don't think it's answered. Something must have happened in the original history that made him think his time machine wasn't going to work. Mm. And he couldn't use it. So maybe he never met with the doctor the first time and he tried to use his time machine the night before and it didn't work and then at the hearing he had no option. I don't, not it, clear. That's, that's not, you don't get that information like no. you're, you're guessing. Mm. Any other thoughts? No, it was a very fun episode. I, I, I did enjoy it. Some trivia then? Sure. This aired on the 13th of March 1991 directed by Michael Switzer his only quantum leap. He also directed episodes of shows like MASH 
NYPD Blue Prison Break. He's now 74. His last screen credit was in 2008. From 2007 through 2010, he was a professor of film directing at Arizona State University. Our writer was Tommy Thompson, fourth of 13. You can hear more about him on the season two podcast for Leaping In Without a Net. Mo Steen was played by Richard Hurd, first of two Quantum Leaps. He had a recurring role in Seinfeld. He had a recurring role in Star Trek Voyager. He showed up in series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Star Trek The Next Generation, Murder, She Wrote and TJ Hooker. He was in films ranging from All the President's Men through to a modern classic like Get Out. What have you got on him? Oh, TJ Hooker. Right. He played uh, Captain Sheridan. In fact, he played Heather Locklear's father, the lovely peak Heather Locklear back in the... Uh, uh, he was phased out towards the end, but I think the first two or three seasons he was, uh, he was in every episode. Okay. He died in 2020 when he was 87. There you go. Irene was played by Deborah Strickland. She was also in Dallas in The Equalizer, but her last screen credit was in 1995, and she's now a PA for a law firm in California. George Weiner played Ben. Oh, no, this guy, is a, for me, is a legend for one particular role. He's a prolific actor. He's been in Fletch, which yeah. is probably what you're referring to. Yes, Gillette. Uh, a Serious Man, Spaceballs, and one of my favourites, more recently, The Umbrella Academy, also in a Columbo episode. He was. He was the film editor in Double Exposure. Mm -hmm. He's now 77, still acting. Alan Fudge, another Colombo veteran. Twice he was in Colombo, I believe. Yeah, three times he was in Colombo. We'll get to that in a second. He played Dr. Sandler. Uh, he's only Quantum Leap, but he was in things like Murder, She Wrote, How I Met Your Mother, The Twilight Zone. He's in One Sledgehammer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mr. Smith and the Old Man in the Sledge. Uh, and of course, Colombo podcast listeners will remember him as a regular guest. He was in Publisher Perish. Ah, yeah. Played David Chase. He was in Colombo Goes to the Guillotine. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Harrow, he was in Colombo Goes to College. Yes. He played Mr. Redman. And he died in 2011 when he was 67. Quite young. Fit a lot in. Yeah. The Judge was played by David Sage. This was his only quantum leap, but he also appeared in The West Wing, Babylon 5, Murder, She Wrote, and Star Trek The Next Generation. He's now 82, but his last screen credit was over 20 years ago in 2002. Some trivia. I thought Mo's comment about time travelling back to Wednesday to watch your favourite TV show might be a reference to the switch for quantum yeah. leap from Friday to to Wednesday that we discussed last week uh, one of the episodes was the accommodate the ankle injury that Scott Bakula sustained in Runaway you mentioned that yes um, I think next week's is a dancing episode they just put on painkillers for that one but then there's another one where we see him hobbling around after that uh, Mo brings Calla Lilies which we know are um, Beth Al's first wife's favourite and in terms of things that we learned Sam obviously watched Future Boy as a child and it probably influenced the design aesthetic of the Quantum Leap project yep. especially the hand link Al uh, is being sued, or was being sued, for alimony payments by his fourth wife. And, yeah, Sam gave himself, via Mo, his theory of quantum leaping. Or string theory, him. Yeah. yeah. Although I think string theory is a different thing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, definitely. His string theory. <laughs> yes. In respect of on this date, um, Bruce Grobelar was born. That's a new sports reference. I have that, ago. yeah. We, we heard about Sputnik having happened two days earlier on the... Yeah. I think two days later, the Brooklyn Dodgers announced they were leaving for LA. That's okay. all I've got. So the day before, we had the birth of Bernie Mac, and the day after, was this all in the one day, this episode? No, it was kind of over two days, you can have the seventh. Okay, the seventh then, we had uh, Jane Torval, her okay. birth, the ice skater. Number ones, in the US it was uh, Tammy by Debbie Reynolds, and Paul Anka topped the charts in the UK with Diana. Next week we have Private Dancer, where Sam has to prevent a young deaf girl from becoming a sex worker. So we will see. I'm sure he'll hand it with great sensitivity. I'm sure he will. We'll see you in 1979. Until then, cheerio. Bye bye.